This is the video of an interview with Dr. Abjorn Fulling of Norway, in which he describes his discovery of PKU. The interview was conducted in Oslo in the 1970s by Dr. Victoria Kass, who was the Director of Maternal and Child Health in the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Dr. Kass made a pilgrimage to Oslo expressly to interview the famous Falling. At the time, many referred to PKU as Falling's disease. In this interview, Dr. Falling describes how he discovered PKU in 1934. Dr. Kass gave me the interview when she retired. The name Osgern Furling is known to physicians throughout the world. His publications are constantly referred to by those interested in the areas of inborn errors of metabolism and mental retardation. 31 years ago, in 1934, Professor Furling described for the first time the syndrome of phenylketonuria, known here in Norway as Furling's syndrome. Professor Perling retired as professor of medicine from the University of Oslo in 1958. I may add that Professor 1927 as a Rockefeller Fellow in medicine. Dr. Ferling, can you tell us how you first came to discover and to describe the syndrome which bears your name? Well, it happened in this way. A lady with two retarded children consulted me. And uh, at that time, you see, the disease was not known. So she had gone from one doctor to the other without any success. There's nothing to blame these doctors because uh, the disease was not described in any journal at that time. She came to me, and I didn't think that I could help her in any way. Uh, but I didn't like to... Uh, I didn't like to... Uh, disappoint her. Disappoint a uh, lady with had who's had husband, suffered that much. Her so husband I had been a former pupil of yours, I understand. Yes, yes, he had. And... Uh, um, so I had a look at the children, but there was nothing to find clinically, except the retardation, which was very suspicious. And uh, also the ordinary, most ordinary reaction on urines did not give any positive things. But when I put ferric chloride into the urine, there developed a deep green color. And what did you think of that? Well, I had never seen such a reaction, and I didn't find it described in the literature either. Uh, but of course, that must be some pathological stuff there, which was the cause of this color. And the first uh, task would be to try to, to uh, isolate and might be determine this stuff. So. I went on with the urine and made some extractions, especially with the eater. And uh, to begin with, I got out some stuff, but that was dark, and I, I found only a black spot in my dishes. But you drew a conclusion from that? The, yes, yes. Uh, of course, it was, uh, I thought it was uh, an oxidation by the oxygen of the air. And after that, I had to work in nitrogen atmosphere. And then I succeeded in having out a stuff, which I, by different uh, recrystallations, uh, got so pure that I could use it for chemical analysis. And the first thing then was to make the ordinary organic chemical analysis to make the, the, the elementary formula. And that came out to be C9. H eight O three. The next step was to split this stuff with the oxidizing regions, the weak, weak reach, weak oxidation reagents, mm -hmm. uh, 
Then I found in the uh, liquid that I found uh, um, uh, benzoic acid and uh, oxalic acid. That told me that the stuff must have a benzene kernel, benzene ring, and a, a side chain with that with at least um, three carbon atoms in it. But it couldn't be more than three because the, that was according to the or, original formula. Uh, so. I had to put it together in some way. In, any de and in addition to that, I, I also found a, a keto group in the in the stuff. And when putting it together, then it couldn't be any other thing that phenylpyruvic acid uh, stuff, which already was known in the organic chemistry. And the last step was to synthesize uh, phenylpyruvic acid, put it together with the stuff I had recovered from the jury. And the melting point was not changed, and that is your proof so that the stuff is... You corroborated device. your hypothesis by yes. a true scientific method. And uh, at the same time, when I worked with that, uh, I also uh, tried to find more patients. My two first patients were both retarded, and they were siblings. Therefore, it was uh, naturally to seek for new patients among retarded people and their siblings. I found nine in my first paper, in my first publication, I had 10 patients. Did you find these first uh, patients uh, institutionalized or were they children who were at home? Most of them I found in the institutions. Mm -hmm. But when I found a patient there, I, I um, uh, examined the family and found four patients in that way. So together I had 11 patients uh, when I was through with my first publication. That was in 1934.